So, uh, so you got a book signing tonight, West Ed, Chapters, 7 p.m. It's been a year since the book's been out. How different is it for you now? Do, do, you, do you regret anything? Do you wish you put more in? Uh, no, I think everything's worked out the way it's supposed to work out. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, the book's been a huge success. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of uh, people in Canada, anyways, that are related to the book and have gone through their, their own similar experiences. And, uh, you know, so it's been kind of nice uh, to be able to relate to, uh, you know, to a whole bunch of people. And, uh, you know, they've found inspiration and hope and all kinds of stuff in the book. So it's been great. When you say similar experiences, what do you mean? Well, sexual abuse. You know, people who also suffered sexual abuse, you know. And, uh, you know, there's no secret that uh, there's a lot of people uh, in this world uh, who have gone through sexual abuse you know the stats don't lie the numbers don't lie and uh you know i've seen that uh you know firsthand uh every morning when i get up and look at my emails wow it's uh, it's incredible well it's well and sad at the same time that that you know people have to reach out because this has happened to them well uh you know the the way that uh we've handled this situation for the first hundred years that it's happened uh i don't think has been uh has given people the opportunity to uh, to expose these predators and these people that take advantage of children, and uh, so maybe maybe now it's, <laughs> people are starting to stand up and, and listen and realize that that it is a huge problem. Why do you think it keeps getting swept under the rug? Is it is it because it's kind of a taboo subject? Like I feel like we know about it, but I mean even well, in hockey and and even with with the priests, it just kind of goes away like it's not really i feel like it's not taken care of enough well i I think it's just because you know we're not educated enough people and it's a you know it's not one of those subjects that's easily dealt with uh um you know there's a lot of pain and shame and guilt and anger you know involved you know around the subject so and i think a lot of times when people have gone through the process of uh you know pressing charges and and those type of things you know, they've been re-victimized by the media, by the prosecutors, by the police. So, you know, it's just a subject that, that really hasn't been handled, uh, you know, properly on in all aspects of life. How hard was it for you to write about it? It wasn't hard at all. You know, I was in a place uh, where I was ready to, to tell the truth. And, uh, you know, I didn't really give a shit what you thought about me. And, uh, you know, this was, and in the end, this was, this was a, this was about hopefully at some point here protecting uh, you know protecting other children uh, uh, you know in this world from from not being victimized. Was it something that you repressed, or was it something that that was in your mind um, through throughout all the years? No, it was it was there all the time. You know, my behavior uh, you know was uh, I think was a perfect example of what I was going through. So uh, you know. Um, I, today I'm just happy that that uh, you know that I've kind of you know reopened the book here and that people are actually starting to listen and, and, and take a look at this and, and realize that uh, you know we're at epidemic proportions here and uh, you know it's the biggest epidemic we have on the planet and, and uh, you know hopefully uh, you know as we continue to go down this path and down this road that uh, you know we will pay more attention to it and, and realize that uh, there are so many other kids being victimized, uh, you know, every single day. Besides reading your book, where, where is someone people can go if they need help, if they're listening right now and they, and they need some help? I know there's a website that you work with. Yeah, there's a couple. Uh, you know, uh, a great one is uh, one in, one in six dot org, Okay. and the other one is themensproject.ca, so... Those are two groups that I've worked with closely over the last year and uh, really believe that uh, both the groups are, are doing groundbreaking work in, in the subject of, uh, you know, men's sexual abuse. And uh, um, uh, they have my, you know, 100, 100% support. You mentioned reopening the book, and I'm going to change topics here to make things a, a little happier because the book is not just about, about that. I mean, you obviously had a, a phenomenal playing career. Uh, throughout the years and uh, there's a new paperback out there for it's a great stocking stuffer for people and Wayne Gretzky writes the forward to it and I wonder what it's like to have a friendship with what what some say is the greatest player of all time I mean he stepped up for you to get on the Olympic team 
What was that like? What was it like to play with him and to know that he that he had your back throughout all of it? Yeah, you know, it's very pretty special that uh, you know that you know one of one of your peers who just happens to be the greatest player that ever played the game. Uh, you know, really kind of appreciated you know how you played and, and uh, you know how competitive that I was. And uh, I, I don't think you know no matter how well Crosby plays or Vetchkin plays or whoever it is that comes up in the near future will ever have the impact that Wayne Gretzky had on the game of hockey and uh, he was an idol of mine growing up and uh, you know and, and then having the opportunity to play with him play for him and uh, you know it was just an amazing experience and to be able to you know to call him uh, a friend is uh, you know it's pretty cool too. What was it like on the ice or either against him or with him was did was there a different feeling on the ice? Because I, I, I've heard that from a few people that there was there was an energy that just that wasn't there with other players. <laughs> well, if you're playing with them, make sure you got your stick on the ice. Cause you <laughs> never knew when the puck was coming your way. <laughs> and, uh, teams developed schemes to play against him because that's how good he was. And uh, he was an amazing, amazing guy to watch. And you know, I just loved the way that uh, he saw the ice. And you know, was so great at using his teammates. And you know. He made Dave Semenko a great hockey player, so you know what does that tell you? <laughs> there, there you go. What, what about uh, playing against him? I mean, I don't want to say you're a scrappy player, but but from time to time, and you know there was an unwritten rule to not go after him. But I think I, I remember you going him. after him. I, I I went after him every chance I got. <laughs> you know? especially, As, especially around playoff time, you know he was taking money out of my jeans. So <laughs> of course I was, of course I was going to be out there trying to beat him and and do whatever I could to you know to to make sure that my team was successful playing against whatever team he was with. All right. Well, and you guys were very successful, I mean, in your rookie season, which is something I think a lot of players, well, obviously a lot of players don't get to win a Stanley Cup at all, but to do it in the first season and accomplish that dream that I'm sure you lived all your life for. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't get much better than that. I, I was really fortunate to, to play uh, to you know, play with the likes of Lionel McDonald and Jim Plinsky and Timmy Hunter, who really, you know, really taught me what it was like to be, a, you know, a professional and and uh, and how to handle myself. And, and uh, you know, not only that, we uh, we had such an amazing team. There, you know, there's could be, you know, by the time it's all said and done, maybe ten Hall of Famers on that team that that, mm. that go to the Hockey Hall of Fame. So, you know. It was an it was an unbelievable team to to be on, and uh, for a guy you know playing his rookie year, uh, you know I couldn't have been in a better situation than that. Was it hard though to have accomplished that dream so early on? Like you work so hard for it, and then it, it comes, and then it doesn't come again. Well, you know, obviously, you know when you're when you're young, you don't really appreciate it because you still have you know the rest of your career in order to do it again. So, you know, and every every year you're training in the summertime you're training uh you know for that opportunity and that chance to win a Stanley Cup so yeah it, uh, you know it didn't happen for me again and uh so uh, I look back on it now and, and really realize how special that group was and how special uh, it was to win how is uh, you mentioned the Hall of Fame how is your relationship with the NHL right now good yeah yeah I, the... got, re- I got reinstated last year and came back and you know kind of left the game that the way that I wanted to and uh so yeah, how important was that to you to to return and do it the way you wanted to and end the way you wanted to? Well, it was it was everything, you know. I think first of all, you know, it gave me some credibility back as a human being and and uh, as a person, and uh, you know, secondly, uh, you know, reinstatement I think you know allows the Hockey Hall of Fame to look look at my career and and uh, maybe someday get that call. Why, why do you think there? I mean, I remember I was living in Calgary last year when 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 you played the games, and people are still to this day massive Theo Fleury fans there. Why? Why? What? What? What is so? In, this is a hard question to ask somebody. But what is so endearing about yourself that that you think made them love you so much, or still to this day? Well, there's lots of people that like underdogs, and especially underdogs that succeed over and over again. And uh, you know, I think people got enjoyment out of the way that I played. I think they were inspired the way that I played and uh, you know, I was a part of a lot of winning situations uh, you know throughout my career so you know, I would say that you know this, those things endear you to fans and, and uh, you know when I when I handled myself in the media I was always very honest and open about who I was and 
and what I expected out of, from my teammates, and and you know, and those kind of things. I never, I was never a guy that you know really bullshitted anybody. You know, it was just kind of this is who I am, and this is this is what I do. So, and I think that people people like people that are honest and uh, you know and open about themselves, especially if you're you know in the public eye. And the Flames fans are special. I mean, I heard a story once about you having a bloody jersey and a fan throwing his jersey to you so you wouldn't miss a shift. Yeah, it was just one of those games. The trainer, you know, it was late in the game. We got a power play at the end of the game, and we were down a goal, and I wasn't allowed to go on the ice with my bloody jersey, so uh, the trainer wasn't able to get it to me quick enough. And so there was a fan sitting right beside the bench that threw me his and got a bunch of autographs on the front of it. So, uh, uh I, I played one shift with the number 76 on the back of my jersey. Oh, really? so. <laughs> How different was it playing in Ireland? I, I, is hockey big there? Do people care? Like, I, I'm, I have no idea. Hockey's huge there. You know, Belfast plays, you know, an absolutely beautiful rink that's built right next to the Irish Sea. And you know, they have a tremendous following. And, you know, the league does as well. You know, um, they've been playing hockey in uh, England since... Uh, Second World War was over, so. Is it something you want to do? Do you want to get back into it in, in another capacity, perhaps? Uh, Maybe overseas no. or here? No, I I really don't have any desire to coach or, or uh, be in management at this point. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely busy speaking across the country, and, uh, you know, wherever I can, I try to help, uh, you know, other victims. And, uh, you know, the goal is to eventually get to Ottawa and, uh, you know, get some new laws passed uh, when it comes to you know, people commit crimes against children. Uh, do you see, when do you see that happening? Do you, do you see it in the, the foreseeable long future? Haul. It's yeah. a long haul. Yeah. We'll take it one day at a time, see what happens. Fair enough. Before I let you go, because I know you're busy, five quick questions, one word answers. Okay. Gretzky or or how? Gretzky. Lennon or McCartney? McCartney. Crosby or Ovechkin? Crosby. Are you more proud of winning a Stanley Cup or Olympic gold? Neither. Neither? Not proud of either? Well, I am proud, yes. Okay, but <laughs> not more proud of one than the other. Gotcha. Yes. yes. And in one word, Theo Fleury. Uh, tenacious.